With me in the studio, I have Jan Willem Storm van Leven. He is a scientist of chemistry and physics. He's also a member of the Nuclear Consulting Group, which is a group of scientists. We are going to talk about a carbon emission of nuclear plants that I personally never have heard of. Yeah, and when I look at the nuclear plant itself, I see damp coming out of the cooling tower. I don't see any smoke. So where is this carbon emission or gas house emission actually coming from? A nuclear power plant is not a standalone system. Uh, you need a lot of industrial systems uh, to get it operating, to construct it, to operate it, and, and to handle the wastes. And you have to take all this process into account uh, when you are talking about uh, CO2 emissions of nuclear power. Um, it's also done with other energy systems. Then the whole chain of processes will be taken into account. So if I understand this correct, so you are we looking at when the drill for the uranium, when they're mining the uranium, there's a kind of carbon oxide emission from the machines drilling, uh, rocks being torn apart, uh, blown up and so yeah. on, and uh, all the chains through the system. Yeah. Uh, as you just said, I mean, the same thing can be said with, a, with, a, with, with, with any kind of power plant. You could say that even for a wind uh, turbine, it also has a carbon oxide emission during its production. So, so what is it that your scientific research shows that, uh, that, that is important for us to know? Uh, we are not talking only about the construction of the power plant, but also with the recovery of uranium from the earth crust and to uh, produce a nuclear fuel from it and afterwards to, uh, to handle the radioactive wastes and very important to decommission and dismantle the power plant. Ne they are never talking about it, but that process will be very intensive, uh, very costly, and will uh, require very much energy and will emit very much CO2 and other uh, greenhouse gases. I have read your report, which we, by the way, will link to on this web page, uh, on our web page. But are there other uh, research showing the same thing like you found during your research that took several years as far as I've understood? Um, yes, a bit. Um, it's difficult. There are very few studies who, who did it. Uh, my study is being um, uh, studied by the Australians uh, at Australian University and, uh, and they affirmed my findings. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some parts of the nuclear processing, they uh, deleted uh, because it was outside the limit of their study. And that could have some, yeah, some reason, I don't know. But uh, uh, in fact, they affirmed my method uh, to, to, to do it. And uh, in fact, it is a thermodynamic uh, analysis. And that takes some time. You, uh, it, it's, it's not very simple. You can do it in a weekend or so. But are there other reports uh, done that will show something similar, that there is a carbon oxide emission or a greenhouse emission by the production of nuclear energy? Uh, mostly, the most reports, um, which are referred to by the uh, uh, IAEA, um, uh, they are not, um, how, how do you say, um, uh, they don't elaborate their system boundaries. They, they, uh, they delete a lot of processes from the nuclear chain and from other processes they uh, take only the direct energy input. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, CO2 emission of a nuclear power plant itself is coming from the diesel engines to, to power the <coughs> auxiliary uh, pumps and so, uh, but um, the, the, uh, the energy needed and the, uh, the CO2 emission uh, accompanying uh, the uh, production of concrete, steel and other materials are not accounted for. So even the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy uh, Agency, yeah. uh, agrees that there is a carbon oxide emission and greenhouse emission, yeah. if I understand yeah. you correctly. Yeah. 
So even the industry itself agrees. Now, when I read this report, and I read the report from 2014, and I believe it's the only one I can find um, on that subject, uh, they say, yes, there is an emission, but it's very low. Yes, uh, very, very low. And uh, they don't say how it is calculated. Oh, that's uh, true. Yes, in, in, in the report, you, you never see a re reference to do a study, and um, they are not even mentioned. Just, so we can't control it. There is n n no peer review possible. However, they have a lot of references, and if I look at the references, there there is uh, the UN references uh, as among them. There is a OECD report, International Agency of the OECD. Uh, there's a lot of nice references uh, in the report, so it sounds solid to me that there is a carbon dioxide emission, but yeah. it's very low and comparable with wind per turbine as far as yeah. I can see. Um, yes, that's true. They are, are men uh, mentioning uh, a lot of studies, but when you are looking at it, if, if possible, they are o uh, very often referring to a much earlier study. Uh, the the first studies published, uh, yes, the, the, the most complete studies uh, comp um, published by the nuclear industry refer to uh, papers from 1971. That was when I was born. <laughs> yeah. A long time ago. So, uh, I think something happened afterwards and, uh, and the nuclear power plants went from 20 megawatts to 3,000 megawatts each, so uh, something has changed. So you're not saying, so you're saying actually that you can't trust these studies. Well, that brings me up to how can we trust any studies, including yours? It, it, I mean, it would take an exact knowledge to know the consumption of fuel running uh, down a whole mountain, as it actually happens in, uh, in uh, some of the African countries, drilling for uranium. Um, it will take uh, knowledge to the accounts, exact accounts from all these private companies. And I, I think that would be a hard study to yeah. do. Yes, I think uh, you should look at the arguments, not at the persons who said it. Um, my reports are backed by uh, thermodynamic analysis. Uh, every physicist can uh, can scrutinize that. So, and he, uh, we have to uh, to discuss on arguments, not on personal names, and that's what's happening now. I understand, but I still don't get the grip that how did your calculations come to the numbers that you have, which are much higher than the, uh, nuclear energy companies in itself. You need to know how much fuel they, they consume. How, how did you get the numbers of yours? Um, I used only numbers of the nuclear industry itself. So you actually used the numbers to have themselves? Yes, it is. but I, I, I looked at the uh, details of the, of the processes, not only at the summaries, but also at the reports afterwards. And then you can see a lot of figures. They are don't use it. But uh, for instance, mining, uranium mining, I, um, uh, I analyzed the process of uranium mine in Australia. And they, yeah, it, it's, it's a company and they have to, to, to report to their uh, um, shareholders. And yeah, you can read it. And so much uh, diesel uh, fuel is used, so, so much uh, electricity. We, have, we need that, that uh, number of, of uh, dump trucks. And, and so, so it's, 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 it's a lot of work, but the figures are present. So that brings me to, let's just say that um, that the calculations you made for a start are, are based upon the nuclear industry itself and based upon the mining industry yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, I also lo uh, watched or read a report from Ex Oxford Research Center uh, and they have an assumption which agrees with you that there is a lot of carbon dioxide emission and also other greenhouse gases emissions. Yeah connected with uh, with uh, drilling and running a power plant, a nuclear power plant. But it's based upon an assumption that the uranium it will continue to be easy access, yes. accessible. Yeah. And that's not completely true, no, is it? No, that's not, that's not the case. Uh, uranium is a mineral, and the uh, easiest mineable and richest ores are mined first 
because they have the highest return on investments. That's all, that, that's with all minerals. Uh, the, the copper uh, grade is is degrading. Uh, the grade of uranium ore are, are lowering, um, and at a given moment, uh, they may reach a point that the recovery of uranium from that ore will take as much energy as you can uh, uh, generate from the uranium. And that's the, that's the energy cliff. So what you refer to an energy cliff, let's get this straight, is that at, 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 uh, because they already have mined the easy access of yeah. uranium, that at the end we will actually use as much energy to drill for uranium or yeah. mine for uranium as we will get out of the uranium with the present nuclear plants, yeah. I guess. Yes, yes, you're, that's right. But there are new technologies involving, though, um, that can enable uh, even to be uh, even to use leftover uranium, you know, the, the nuclear waste and so on, as far as I can understand. But the reports by again the International Atomic Energy Agency, uh, meaning the industry itself, um, there seems to be a lot of good news coming that way. Uh, there is something called tutorium, fast breeder reactor. So let's start with thorium uh, reactors, which yeah. is actually a big discussion in several uh, countries right now. Um, that that would enable us to 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 have much easier access to to something uh, yeah. better than uranium. Yeah. They promise it, uh, but uh, why didn't happen? They started that um, research investigation in the 1950s, 1960s, and on the uranium plutonium breeder in seven countries. It's not only the US, and 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 not only France, and so. Um, uh, I think uh, about a hundred billion euros are spent, and uh, they they gave up in the 1990s because the uh, it, 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 it's, they didn't succeed. It it it, it didn't work, uh, and that has to do with uh, basic natural laws. So you're saying that just by watching the basic natural laws, you should have understand that this was not possible. Yes, yes. Um, the, uh, the same holds true for thorium. Uh, that, that's uh, even more complicated than the uranium plutonium breed. And that breeder concepts are based on assumptions uh, that you uh, can have a hundred percent pure materials, 100% perfect, that your separation processes are 100% perfect. So when you have a, a mixture of uh, spent fuel with uh, dozens of nuclides in it, uh, they, they assume you can, uh, you can separate it into dozens fractions, very pure. But that isn't possible based on the second law of thermodynamics. They agree in this report from the IA again from 2014 that it is hard. They just say, and I quote, it's being 20% cheaper. However, the production of thorium fuel is more complicated. It doesn't say anything like impossible here in the report. Now, why are they not if that's the case, telling the truth. It sounds to me that they all lie, and it's a bit much, isn't it? Uh, why wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, fairy tales. Yes. yes. Yeah. Why would they tell fairy tales? Uh, yes, I, th uh, I think uh, it, it's uh, money. Uh, it, 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 it's to, to, to uh, means to, to, to get more money for investigations, uh, but uh, they, they haven't... A, a timeline uh, when they are talking about thorium uh, uh, it will take about two uh, centuries two centuries 200 years to develop uh, a park of thorium reactors uh, that, that's f from for, um, you can um, <clears throat> you, you can say that because of technical and uh, reasons and uh, based on the uh, natural laws so uh, it isn't easy, it isn't cheap, it isn't light, uh, it, it, it isn't fast. Uh, yeah, that stories were told uh, in the 1950s as well about uh, uh, other systems. Uh, when um, the uh, American 
uh, Navy uh, search for uh, reactors for the nuclear-powered uh, warships, uh, all kinds of, of uh, concepts were uh, went around, but it were the same stories. And uh, at last, it was the precious water reactor, what was the most uh, uh, yeah, the most reliable uh, reactor, and that was used in ships, and that was a lot uh, later used for nuclear power plants as well. So you're saying is this is not a new story, and they haven't devolved it so far, so there is no reason to believe them that they should involve it in the future. No. However, there is something called fast breeder reactor. That I know that uh, especially the Japanese, even I think it's Mitsubishi, I might be wrong, uh, is is uh, already done the design on that. Uh, and they believe to even be, again, to recycling uranium, so they will be able to use, again, uh, mm. the uranium already spent. Um, and also uh, the energy uh, outcome will be 50 times more energy. Mm. You told me before this interview that there are even numbers like 100 times more. Um, that sounds to me like a big, uh, a good solution in that case. Yes, yes. And then, then they may tell why it they didn't su succeed. And then they say, yeah. Economic reasons, and I can't believe that. When 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 you can take a hundred times more energy from a give a chunk of uranium, why should that need more economic than one piece of energy from the chunk? This, so uh, there are there's a contradiction in their uh, uh, in their statement. There's another point I think that it's very difficult to admit. You are on the wrong way. You are working on a dead end road, and that—that's. I, I think it is a mental problem, a paradigm problem. So you're saying that they they don't want to admit it because they are already paid by the industry yes. and they want to continue as yes, the, as, as, yes. As, as, as yeah. so I think so, I think so. There is a Swiss Center for Life Cycle Inve Inventions that also looked into to energy consumption. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, I uh, I know that Don'ts is a member of it and, and, and some other people. And uh, um, in some uh, respects, they agree with my studies, but they are saying my figures are far too high. But I use the figures from the nuclear industry, which are a bit hidden in their reports. But can we agree upon that nuclear is better than coal? If you disregard the aspect of danger, of course, it's it's. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, more dangerous. Uh, nuclear. Um, we had two uh, disasters, uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima, uh, and uh, very large areas are contaminated with radioactive materials, and that's forever. You you can't uh, clean of it in the. Uh, groundwater in that countries are forever contaminated, and uh, coal is is polluting. Uh, that's true, but there are tec uh, techniques, technologies to use uh, clean coal. And uh, when you uh, um, when coal is gasificated at the mine, you can you can uh, distribute clean gas to a country. But it's again a, um, a question of an issue of uh, a mindset. And <coughs> the, the techniques are present, are on shelf. Mm -hmm. But it isn't done because it costs more money. So it's a question of energy prices, in other words. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, the prices are too low. Yeah. I see. So. so if I have to choose, if we only look at carbon dioxide emission, so a nuclear plant is better than a coal plant, I take it? At this moment, but uh, the, it, it, it's not staying so. Um, the CO2 emission of nuclear is increasing with time. That's unavoidable because the uh, oil grade of uranium is uh, is is lowering and lowering because the highest grades are mined first. So when and at a given moment, the CO2 emission of the recovery of uranium, uh, together with the other CO2 emissions, is higher than of coal. And that 
uh, at the present rate of nuclear power, uh, present capacity that could be some uh, sometimes between uh, 2050, 2070, then uh, there is no CO2 uh, advantage of, of nuclear. And then we didn't talk about other greenhouse gases, only CO2. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there are other greenhouse yes. gases. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Krypton. Yes. Um, uh, at the fission in the fission process in nuclear reactors, a lot of radioactive krypton is generated, and that's being released into the air. A part at the nuclear power station, a part at the um, uh, the cooling pools of spent fuel cooling pools, and uh, and and the rest is uh, released at the reprocessing plants. It's all. In, in principle, all uh, Krypton uh, 85 is being released into the air. And uh, that's not a greenhouse gas in itself. No, I was just about to say, it's not yeah. a greenhouse gas. Nee, nee. That's, that's true. But it, it reacts with uh, uh, air in the lower layers of the atmosphere to ozone. And that's a very strong greenhouse gas apart from its uh, health problems it gives. So... Um, uh, Krypton is a, a, a very underrated um, <coughs> emission of uh, of nuclear power, and there are not very not very much known about the health effects, but th that could be severe. Uh, this, uh, in combination with uh, ultraviolet, this when you are outside in the sun, uh, it could be very harmful in, for your head, for your uh, skin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are there's little known. Um, I, I get I, I got an email from uh, Alexei Jabrokov, that's a Russian scientist who wrote a, a very famous book on Chernobyl, and he uh, yes he congratulated with me, uh, me with this report. He said yes, it is a very very harmful gas, and it's spread among the earth, so it's it's not kept. At the place of uh, of release, now it's the whole atmosphere is uh, being loaded with Krypton uh, 85. I don't know the the half life, but it, it's it, um, ten, t many tens of years. As before, it, it yeah, the word, word half is decade to decade. To, to each something other. Yeah. So if we can't use nuclear for avoiding the greenhouse gas effects mm. from what you say because of all these um, emissions, not only CO2 but also other emissions, what on earth are we going to do? Because the nuclear industry says that the only way that we can solve our greenhouse gas problem with the melting ice caps, and I've been there and believe me they are melting, and um, what are we to do then? Yes. Um uh, I wrote uh, a report for the CU21 uh, 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 conference in Paris uh, uh, past December. Yeah. And uh, you can calculate that with the um, scenarios of the nuclear industry itself, uh, the contribution to uh, mitigation mm -hmm. could be at most 1% at 25, uh, 2050, who uh, assumed that nuclear doesn't emit greenhouse gases at all. So even if we wanted to, let's say, let's, if we, if we say that nuclear uh, nuclear plants are the right thing to do, yeah. they will never take, will ever be possible to no. produce more no. energy than 1%? No. Yeah, then the mitigation of the, uh, uh, yes, the, uh, they can, uh, at, at the moment, the contribution, the energy contribution of nuclear energy is about 1.6% uh, of the whole world energy uh, consumption. Yeah, that's, uh, that's according to a CD report, as far as uh, I remember. Yes, yes. that's uh, according to the... Uh, when you are calculated in a physical right way, but they, they, they don't, so they... Uh, <laughs> yeah. They take it three times as much, but the, the, no, that, that's not not to tell here. But uh, but in in fact, it is one point six percent. And when you uh, 
translated in greenhouse gas emissions, that's about 1%. So it's 1.6% in inner sea production, but it's only 1% less in greenhouse gas emissions. That's right. So what is the solution then, if not nuclear? Uh, yes, solar, solar and wind. But the wind doesn't always blow and the yeah. sun does not always shine. Yeah, that, that's the argument, but that's, uh, yeah, that's radical. Ridiculous, but uh, solar uh, energy and uh, wind energy, you can trans uh, you can transform it in hydrogen, and hydrogen is a very good uh, energy uh, carrier. You see, you can store it and you can transport it, and uh, and you can make uh, liquid uh, fuels from it with CO two from the air. <laughs> So, so you can even take out CO2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does this technology already exist? Pardon? Does it, this technology already yes, exist? Yes, yes, that, that's not new. It, it, it's possible. And they are, um, in, uh, I think, in uh, the Netherlands, there are plans to use um, old uh, platforms, oil platforms in the North Sea, to make hydrogen from wind and to transport that to... Uh, to land or to to uh, to generate electricity from it when the wind doesn't blow, uh, it's 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 uh, technically it is very easy to uh, to smooth out the the uh, fluxes uh, the, the, the fluxation of the, the energy, fluxations yes. of the energy. Yes, this this that that's not a real argument. Well, Jan Wilhelm Storm von Leven, I thank you very much for us to join here in Euronet's head office and I wish you all well. well. Yeah, you're welcome. Huh?